I feel impelled to speak today in a language that, in a sense, is new. One which I, who have spent so much of my life in the military profession, would have preferred never to use. That new language is the language of atomic warfare. The atomic age has moved forward at such a pace that every citizen of the world should have some comprehension, at least in comparative terms, of the extent of this development, of the utmost significance to every one of us. Clearly, if the peoples of the world are to conduct an intelligent search for peace, they must be armed with the significant facts of today's existence. Welcome aboard the USS Estes. As you may or may not know, the Estes here is the command ship of Joint Task Force 132. We have minutes to go before the first blast mic shot of Operation Island. Uh, 59 minutes now to be exact. We've been here since daybreak. Let we talk last night during the early morning hours. Now, as you can imagine, feeling is running pretty high about now, and there's reason for it. If everything goes according to plan, we'll soon see the largest explosion ever set off on the face of the Earth. That is, the largest that we know of. In the time between our and HR, I'd like to show you around, if I may, and introduce you to some of the people connected with this operation and in general, piece together the events which have brought us to this point. To start off, I'd like to show you something over here. You realize there are many miles of ocean between us and any Weetok Atoll. To know what's going on back at the Atoll, these antennas are receiving televised signals and are giving our men here a second-by-second -second account of what's happening on Shot Island. The television receivers are in here, in the control room. Well, this is it. This is the control room. I'd like to have you meet Mr. Stan Burris, the commander of the scientific task group. Oh, Stan, I wonder if you could tell us something about the operations that go on in this room. Sure, I'd be glad to. Uh, the screens you see in front of you enable us to monitor the uh, timing and firing system. If you will look close, you will see that it is now 55 minutes before each hour. As time clicks off, more and more lights come into operation. This is the one minute light, 30 second, 15, five, one uh, through firing. 
This diagram will give you a general idea of the whole setup. Data from the sequence timer is piped over to a display panel. This kind of display panel is new to atomic test work because of the large number of remote control and metering problems encountered in this operation. For one thing, the master timing and metering apparatus is located next door to the shot cab rather than being placed some 20 miles away on Parry Island as is usually done. This close view is possible, of course, because the lens of a television camera rather than human eyes is watching events. So that's the flow. From timer on through to display panel, picked up by a television camera and relayed on out to the estates. A very ingenious arrangement. 